too. What the fuck? Hello there, I assume you know what you're getting yourself into if you're here. I've decided to maybe end this trilogy with Season 3. If you've watched Part 2, you'll know I was debating whether I should skip to Season 7. To show how this show has always been plagued with super speed consistency issues that make Barry an awful hero. But since those who like the show can already agree that it's really fallen off in the latest seasons, I figured I'll do 3 next, since the first 3 seasons are usually considered peak superhero television by those same people. And if this video does well, I will continue past three. Probably. Now, if you're only here to watch me rip into Season 3, you can skip along to this timecode. Right now, I'd like to spend a few minutes addressing some feedback I've received on my first two videos with some clarifications and corrections. At the moment, I'm interested in approaching media criticism from a writing standpoint. Elements that have an effect on the way the plot, sequences, or payoffs occur. I find it fun, and it gets the gears turning. If you do not like this approach, that's fine. You don't have to watch these videos. Unfortunately, the Flash suffers greatly when viewed under this lens. In fact, I spotted a lot of these issues on my first viewing of the show in 2015 before the discussion about internal inconsistencies even started among the creators I now follow. Now I know I was onto something, and which is why these videos were made so late. So stop it to those trying to discredit my criticisms by claiming I'm going out of my way to spot mistakes and watching with the intention to hate it. I was eager to watch this show more than anything because I thought Super Speed was a really cool power. I ended up very disappointed and even mad because they handled it super poorly. That's all there is to it. There are corrections I'd like to make to my first video because wouldn't you know it, I can make mistakes. I said stopping Martin would have instantly stopped the tornado, but the tornado would most likely be self-sustaining by that point. Not sure why I thought that. I criticized this scene from episode 3 for having Barry speed up to Pitbull and then punching him at normal speed, thus allowing Pitbull to turn into a gas and avoid the punch. How However, a viewer pointed out that the punch wouldn't have landed regardless because Pitbull is perpetually in his gas state. He needs to be exhausted to return to his solid state. I thought I agreed with this until I realized he was able to punch Barry in this shot, meaning he has control over whether he is a solid or a gas. Therefore, it was entirely possible he was solid at this moment, and I would go as far as saying he is always solid when he isn't a green cloud. Either way, it's still incredibly stupid for Barry to stop using super speed when he goes to attack someone, and he gets this right sometimes, so you can't say it's because he doesn't want to risk killing them or something. In my second video, some people in the comments pointed out how if Zoom was apprehended when Barry had his first chance in episode 18, then he wouldn't have killed these cops and this news guy, plus Rupture, in episode 20. I can't believe I missed that, but yeah, add 10 people to those who should have been saved by Barry. And to those who tell me the writers should not be consistent, because having Barry end conflict instantly isn't entertaining for 20 23 episodes at 40 minutes per episode per season, I have a wild idea that might blow your mind, so hold on to something. They didn't have to make it that way. They could have reduced the number of episodes and length of each episode. They could have distributed the money they would have spent on more episodes into the writing and CGI budget. And there exists a little show out there, one that also has an overpowered hero who can end conflict in an instant. In fact, it's self-aware of this because the entire premise is built on this concept, and it's still entertaining. Oh, and lastly, two general changes I'll be making to these videos going forward. The city's just fine. It's the people in it who need to be educated that I have no rival! <laughs> I'm sure you've seen the rival on TV. He is terrorizing the city to prove that he's the fastest. <laughs> What is he, five years old? How does that even prove speed? People aren't going to think about how you're the fastest when you're wreaking havoc. They're going to think you're an asshole. Wouldn't you want to compete in a race to prove you're faster? Woo. 
It will never not bother me to see characters turning their back and celebrating when they've barely done anything. Wally, please, you only flip this guy over, he's not harmless now because of it. What confuses me is that Barry didn't even fucking help him this whole time when this is pretty much exactly what he planned. I'm gonna go at him head on. You attack at a 90 degree angle. When he turns to fight you, leaves himself vulnerable to me. You literally wanted to double team Rival, so why did you just sit back and spectate when Wally attacked him head on? Rival's back is wide open for you. Help Wally, you moron. <laughs> You know, I want to take a minute and correct something else I said about Season 1. A few have pointed this out and it's finally time to come clean. For Episode 1, I suggested Barry should just run into the tornado and KO Martin instead of reversing the tornado because Caitlin said he could die from doing that. But some comments said we don't know if Barry would survive running through it. And you know what? Fine. Running through thick air faster than a bullet is definitely risky and should not be attempted. Oh, what's that? He actually can run through tornadoes without learning or being told to do it? Suck my pee pee those who said I was wrong for suggesting that. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Madvocate, you just said yourself the tornado would be self-sustaining, so he'd have to reverse it anyway. Yeah, but wouldn't it be easier to reverse it by removing the source generating the tornado first? This is like trying to push a car, but instead of having the car in neutral, you have it on drive going against you. Not a great plan. I know, I won't get hung up on this, I just wanted to point out how I should have talked about it in hindsight and that my suggestion was possible to do. Anyway, I don't even know what's going on here. He was able to go through both tornadoes but they're also solid enough for him to run on instead of continuing to pass through it. SHUT THE FUCK UP! I will be taking these back to the jewelry store you stole them from. Beautiful. This is Peak Flash. Now where the hell is he for most of the show? There's nowhere to run! So this scene was so close to being passable, guys, like we were this close to decency. So this chick's alter ego is a split personality. She blacks out when switching to her and doesn't remember what she does as her. Julian, Barry's new partner, approaches her with aggression like a dumbass after finding out she's a metahuman and the one who put her foster father in the hospital. This triggers her alter ego into using the force on this metal mural to crush Julian. Notice how she's still standing there for the duration of Barry saving Julian, but two seconds later, she has vanished. Now you guys probably know how much I hate it when these non-speedster enemies teleport somehow because it's so obvious the writers want to use them for later, but I'm giving this instance a pass for one reason. Barry actually runs outside to look for her, and she's actually there, something he hasn't tried in a similar instance in the past for no reason. And you guys know how much I hate it when Barry stops to talk, but I'll give this instance a pass for one reason. He just witnessed that Frankie clearly has a weak grasp on her alter ego and probably didn't intend on turning. Wait, what's her alter ego's name? My name is Magenta. <laughs> <laughs> now, if Magenta continues to be hostile after one attempt at calming her down, then Barry can throw some hands or use that good old relocation. And wouldn't you know it, she continues to be hostile, raising this cop in a car high in the air, threatening to drop him. Barry performs this fantastic maneuver, and now he can proceed to knock her ass down. Oh, never mind. God damn it, they made her teleport again! Without going to look for her, it just moves on to the next scene. Fuck me. <laughs> Snart's goal here is to kill Sam Scudder, who gets knocked out by Snart and held at gunpoint. But Snart doesn't kill him because he saw strange lights in the sky? And then he immediately commands his men to ditch the place as if he knows exactly what's going on? I'm guessing he assumes whatever that is in the sky will definitely reach and kill Scudder for him, which is a terrible assumption, and shooting this man will take one second, so why not pull the trigger to guarantee his death? Wait, this happened three years ago and Scudder decides now to come out of the mirror? Why? <laughs> 
and the first thing he asks is where is Snart to this poor maintenance worker? Cleaning up this place was decided three years later? It's not like it was abandoned, this is an established company workshop. It's also interesting how this mirror instantly breaks upon Scudder making contact with it, but the one that gives him his power doesn't upon kicking it and slamming against the ground. So, mirrors, windows, it sounds like he can travel through anything that has a reflective surface. Hmm. Okay, now that it's been established that Barry and the whole gang know their next target is someone who can easily escape through reflective surfaces, Barry should immediately apprehend him since it's really easy to find reflective surfaces, especially inside buildings. I mean, if he's not going to KO Scudder or relocate him to Star Labs, the least he could do is move him away from reflective surfaces. It was a robbery at First National. Let me help. Uh, We've been training for a reason, right? I gotta try. Yep. Yeah. Alright, cool. Just follow my lead. <laughs> oh, two speedsters are gonna be there. Well, golly, Scudder should stand no chance, right? Yeah, so, uh, we're not gonna let you leave here with that. Hey, Flash. Shut! This is the guy who can run at Mach 3 and react to bullets, but did nothing when Scudder went to touch a window. Nice skirt, Top. Shut! You're gonna be okay, but you won't. Dude can react fast enough to stop a bullet from entering his neck, but couldn't react to getting grabbed and break himself free. Well, I hope it consists of doing something like this. Hello again. Shut! Jesse, quick. Quick to run, quick to fall. Nice skirt, top. Top. I like it, because they spin, spin, spin. What's, what's happening? What happened? I don't know. I don't know, okay? I looked at Dylan and I lost my balance. She's a metahuman who induces vertigo. So why the fuck are you looking at her again? So, Barry's plan is to lure Scudder into the circus with a hologram of Snart. He will then lead him to a circle of mirrors by smashing a makeshift hallway of them. And this infinite loop will prevent him from leaving this area somehow. The show is making it very clear that it's supposed to be really hard to arrest this guy, so I wonder how Barry's gonna do that. It was that fucking easy? Why didn't you cuff him earlier than you, Mong? Like when he was walking in, and nowhere near any mirrors. Not only did the writer choose to make Barry so inefficient, he also made him a complete asshole by destroying property when it easily didn't need to be. But I guess needlessly wrecking property is somewhat consistent with his character. He saw the energy blast coming towards him, and did nothing about it. It's over, Alchemy. Shut! Relocate them, you fucking moron. You can carry two people at the same time. Take them outside, far away from here. Wallace. Wallace West. Take your power. Wally? Wallace! 
Wally! Go, Wally! Stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him. Why the fuck did you growl at them? What? Motherfucker could have moved somewhere else with Barry once these two showed up, or he could have just killed him earlier instead of dragging him everywhere. This is not your fault. Frozen food warehouse. There she is. I'm gonna figure out what she's making Julian do. I'm going. So, before we see what happens, I'll summarize what's led up to this moment. Caitlyn is starting to dance on the line between herself and her Killer Frost alter ego. She wants to find alchemy, which we later find out is because she thinks there may be a possibility he can get rid of her powers. To find him, she kidnapped Julian, and everyone is aware of this. In other words, she is dangerous and unpredictable right now. So, when Barry arrives to their location, he has a multitude of options. He could KO her. But if he doesn't want to punch her, he could take her to Star Labs or relocate Julian to safety, like outside of this warehouse, and then come back in to give a pep talk. He could also use the power dampening cuff Cisco made. Now, let's see what this hero does. What part of I'll freeze you to death did you not understand? Stop. Shut! Get out of here. No, I can't. What are you doing? Take her out. Take her out. Ah, ah, he said it. He said it. You don't want to do this. You don't want to hurt anybody. She's willing to hurt someone. Knock her out. Julian did nothing wrong, you cretin. Okay, first of all, it's creep. Shut up, Mike. It's cretin. I cannot fathom how unself-aware whoever wrote this was. Barry swoops in to coddle Snow by telling her she doesn't want to hurt the victim, and then he punches the victim hard enough to knock him out when he encourages Barry to deal with this efficiently, in a way he's no stranger to. From the bottom of my heart, Fuck you. And I'm sorry, weren't you trying so hard to convince Julian that Flash is a good guy who can be trusted? So how the hell did you expect him to feel when that very same Flash sucker punched him, you stupid fuck? I guess we won't know, because Julian doesn't mention it when he comes to. Convenient, because you'd think if Julian brought this up in a statement, the Flash would now be an accomplice to Killer Frost. Albert's down! Shoot her! What the hell is going on? What is Barry looking for? He does this for a few seconds, knowing that Killer Frost is still active and trying to kill people. This could include himself. Why did you just run around the corner and not back to Star Labs with her? What unfinished business do you have that's making you stay here? What, were you going to wait for the cops to come find you and resume shooting at Caitlyn? Don't follow me. Caitlyn, come on. Huh, you guys are gonna make this look so easy and never do it again, huh? Yep, I'm bringing back what I said in season one. You know what, I really don't understand why Barry shows up to the more dangerous enemies completely empty-handed. This dumbass really doesn't take advantage of super speed. Like, he already doesn't instantly KO these criminals with a 100 mile per hour punch for whatever reason. So another possibility is pulling a Dexter and injecting his enemies with Animal Tranquilizer. He can just run up to them and inject them without them even knowing. He 
fucking does this in episode 17 with like a hundred people. There's nowhere to run! Invasion. That was Vigilante, and we nearly had him. I haven't watched Arrow to know who Vigilante is, but if he has to resort to guns, then I'm assuming he has no powers, at least any offensive ones. So if you're going to pull Oliver away and leave Vigilante there, then at least finish the job for him, you dick. Um, uh, where's Snart? He sacrificed himself. You dense fuck, how about you relocate them yourself? Did you forget again that you can do this? I don't know what the repercussions are for these people getting beamed, but I can only pray no one dies because Barry refused to use his brain. Avatar, you just get that stone. Stab him, 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 stab him. Wow, Savitar truly is a walking tentacle blade. Why did he just pinball machine Jay around for 30 seconds of screen time if he's both faster than him and has this fucking knife? I mean, Jay should have totally died from this massive fall already, but piss off with this bullshit. Oh, now he's ready to stab Jay as soon as Barry closes the box. Yeah, how convenient. <laughs> Guys, what's going on? Cisco's workshop. Barry, he opened the box. Cisco, bow to your god. You fucking idiot. All you had to do was push the lids and take the box away from Cisco with super speed. Iris's killer has literally been summoned with this box. Why stop to talk to Cisco to ask him to close it? Not gonna lie though, it's pretty funny watching Barry get absolutely manhandled by Savitar. <laughs> Motherfucker, use your superpower! What do you accomplish with scraping the wall at normal speed? Kill them already! Isn't that your goal by constantly extending your blade? Wait, if Savitar can physically interact with the real world, why doesn't he just destroy the box so he can fuck with Barry at all times? Ah, fuck it, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I just don't see why you're defending the yellow guy. 
yes, he goes everywhere the Flash goes. But this morning, for example, he's just standing back, waiting for the warehouse to burn down. I'm sorry, who the hell is this disingenuous prick? He's complaining that Wally just stood around, but he completely left out the fact that Barry was also just standing around for most of the time Wally was. Not to mention, they ended up putting out the entire fire and they saved Porky's life. What exactly is the problem here? He wouldn't be sucking Flash's dick if he saw all those times he stood around and let criminals get away and people die. I say we just send him to Keystone. We already have a Flash. Dude saw Kid Flash in action for the first time and immediately came to the conclusion that he would rather have one superhero in his city than two. Is it because I'm black? See, I'm living with someone now, so I can't have criminals constantly interrupting our alone time. Shut! Flash. Morello was found guilty of grand theft and aggravated assault after he was caught by the Flash. <laughs> I know we're supposed to believe Plunder escaped thanks to Barry being caught off guard, but I am once again reminding you, mans can react to bullets, lightning, and comprehend entire books within seconds, but he couldn't recall a simple memory quickly and react to this guy pointing a gun at him. And we're supposed to believe he got away because he shot Barry and has a motorcycle, but this gun doesn't take away his speed or anything, and this very season demonstrated Flash being capable of catching up to motorcycles and disassembling assembling them. Yo, there's a robbery at the Payson Hotel. Go. Yeah. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. You just couldn't resist another heist, huh? Shut! It's a little annoying that it's very clear what the writer's intentions were with Plunder, because he's essentially a Captain Cold clone and yet he's treated very differently. He only serves as a one-and-done villain to be a headline in the news segment Barry witnessed in the future. Barry, and everyone else, is aware there should be no problem with catching him since he's a normal man with a gun. The only issue at hand is Barry deciding whether or not to catch him, which is immediately solved by having Wally catch him instead. This issue wasn't the case with Captain Cold cold though, and yet they made him escape all the fucking time because he's just so iconic and charismatic and they really wanted to use him again and again and again. So this is the episode where Gypsy breaches into Earth-1 to arrest HR. All she has are breaching powers, so trying to capture her is like trying to capture Cisco. just keep that in mind. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the building. Caesar, that's fun. I don't have fun too. If I really wanted to go through you, you would all be dead. Just because she said that doesn't mean it's true. Let's go home. Are you telling me Gypsy can react to bullets? Barry started running before she even turned around. And you're telling me Barry wasn't fast enough to react to her turning around and grabbing his hands at normal speed? <laughs> What the fuck is this plan anyway? HR put a tracking device on her, which is great, but then he and Barry decide to have him talk to her and pretend like he's turning himself in. You don't need a distraction. Barry could have just cuffed her off the bat while she's chilling out drinking coffee. You morons actually gave her a reason to be suspicious of this being a setup. Tell Cisco there is no backing out now. I'll keep this one as insurance until then. Yeah, right. Okay, you know there is a reason they call me the fastest man alive. 
So, we have this scene to establish Yorkin's powers. He turns things into ash upon touching them. He has to consciously activate his power, otherwise he shouldn't be able to open this door or hold this coffee cup later without turning them into ash. His clothes also possess this dusting power, and is the reason why he can't even be grabbed anywhere. So, the characters are all now aware of this, just keep that in mind. Tyrus is panic alarm. She's at the apartment. I'll call Barry. No, no, no. I, I got this. Uh, he's at CCPD and I'm closer. Okay, go. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. Don't stop to talk. No, stop! You imbecile! Are you trying to get her killed? Do you seriously think this psychopath is going to listen to you saying, No, stop! What the hell is this? Do you know what it means for Jorkin to grab Iris at normal speed while Wally is running towards him at super speed and in slow motion? Either this is horrendous editing or this guy is Savitar in disguise. Hmm, something tells me people are going to defend this by saying Wally isn't as fast as Barry since he hasn't had as much training and experience. Yeah, you guys are probably right. <laughs> Hold up, this dude was at the same train station where Joe and Stone were shortly before it took off, and now he's somewhere far ahead of them despite the train going for a while. Did he teleport? Did he manage to outdrive the train and walk all this way to what looks like the middle of nowhere? We don't even know if he has a car. I, I cannot believe someone at the writer's room said, let's have Joe and Stone board the train, reveal that Yorkin's also there, and then have him crumble a bridge that's miles ahead of the train. And everyone else went, yup, makes sense to me. I don't know about you guys, but my suspension of disbelief for phasing is really starting to get tested. Seconds ago, Barry was able to successfully phase an entire moving train with all of its components and passengers intact. And while that's already overpowered as fuck, Wally can somehow phase through a person and allow the blood on his hand to stay inside him, instead of the blood phasing right through him as well. This allows him to neutralize the the enemy, so no, not a nitpick. There's nowhere to run! Barack Obama. You'd think a Colosseum fight between a speedster and a giant gorilla would be kind of fun, but no, this fight sucks balls. Cisco says, It's all about the speed punches. And then the man who can outrun gunshots decides to run significantly slower than he usually does, giving Reverse Harambe a chance to react to him. Not only that, but this nitwit couldn't react to Monk putting up his shield for a counter when he totally could have. <laughs> Yeah, no, this isn't cool. It's fucking embarrassing. What about a lightning throw? Yes! Barry laps around the entire Coliseum at least 50 times and is still somehow not charged enough for a lightning throw. Do you guys remember what it took for a lightning throw in Season 2, Episode 2? About 30 tiny laps. <laughs> One lap around the Colosseum already exceeds that distance. He should have already thrown it far earlier than he intends to. Oh well, as long as nothing goes wrong with his task at hand. <laughs> Wait, this dude ran through two tornadoes and overpowered them, but a dust cloud tripped him. <laughs> Barry, it's time to pull a reverse flash. This is what ends the fight. And technically, he didn't even pull a reverse flash because he didn't phase through reverse Harambe's chest. This same thing could have been done with a speed punch, but for some reason they immediately gave up on that after Flash decided to run slower in front of Monk instead of from the side or behind him. What, you wanna kill Grodd? Showing mercy? 
That is what separates you from everyone else. Don't compromise who you are. What? Where is this coming from? Barry's had no problem with killing before. Why are they acting like he's never done it? Didn't think I could catch you, huh? Now, Cisco. <laughs> The amount of radiation about to flood that room. Adam Smasher won't be able to absorb it all. And we're talking about a fucking gorilla attempting to wage war on the human race with an army of super apes. Literally nobody is going to be upset that you killed him, except maybe PETA. Not to mention, you planned to throw a bolt of lightning at Reverse Harambe. You didn't know if he would survive that. Fucking fantastic, this dipshit didn't learn his goddamn lesson the first time. Running at him from the front again, not being able to react to a shield moving at him at normal speed. Stop! Death isn't the way! enough to save Iris from Savitar. <laughs> you did it! Wait, this is their plan to save Iris. By getting Wally to run 0.21 seconds faster? Why not just have him start running earlier while Barry's busy talking to Savitar? Why did Barry even stop to talk? Does he really think Savitar is going to change his mind by being asked? If he just shut the hell up and just ran earlier, he probably would have made up for those 0.21 seconds. Why does Wally have to run at the same exact time Barry starts running in this vision? Just run earlier and catch Savitar off guard. God is speed. Soon your enemies will fall and you will rise once more on Earth. <laughs> Acting. I have to go. I can't let him get out. What are you talking about? Savitar. You need to tell Barry, okay? No, I can do this by myself. Jesse, please, just wait here. Wally is a fucking hypocrite. He was mad at Barry for not telling people why he really proposed to Iris, but he didn't tell fucking anybody he was going to throw this extremely important artifact that has the power to summon Iris' killer into the Speed Force. He also thinks having both pieces of the stone in the Speed Force is safer than having them in two different places. Jesse decided not to follow Wally after seeing him clearly distressed and having Savitar visions and declaring he's going to stop him. Wally and Jesse being a pair of idiots is the only way we get Savitar. And if Wally was saved in episode 6 like he should have, he never would have gotten super speed and therefore he wouldn't have been able to do this bullshit. Also, if he's so concerned about Savitar somehow getting the last piece, why keep it in a dinky box someone can just bump into and bust open? Why not put it in one of their prison cells? I'm gonna kill you! Barry Allen doesn't kill. He's the good guy. Then what the fuck was this about? I am the future. There's nowhere to run! If you want Wally, all you need to do is go through those doors. But you're gonna have to outrun that thing first. Well, that's gonna be an easy task, considering Caitlyn could outrun it. Oh. It's actually going to try this time. Use super speed, use super speed, use super speed, use super speed. Use, uh, okay, what the f- what the f- what the fuck? 
This fucking thing was using super speed mere seconds ago and now it decides not to. Because you know, if it did, then it would have killed Barry in the elevator. And what the fuck part 2? This thing was phasing through solid objects mere seconds ago and now it's completely stopped by elevator doors. Because you know, if it phased again, then it would have killed Barry in the elevator. And we can't have that, we've gotta have five more fucking seasons of this shit. Well, maybe not. Barry can use his chest piece to blow them up like he does later, but if he does that with this wraith, then he can't with this one that gets a hold of him. So yeah, he's dead. Visiting hours are over, Flash. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Fuck off, now I gotta see this walking plot hole beyond the grave. Need to put an end to this once and for all and stop Savitar. Do what you do best. Be the Flash. It's genius. Come up with that by yourself. There's nowhere to run! You're too slow. Nighty night, Flash. Damn it, I can't even be mad that this guy successfully warped Barry into musical dream world since he's also a speedster apparently, and a faster one too. They're being drained. The guy who did this to them, I think he's stealing their powers. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy is stealing Barry and Supergirl's powers while they're asleep to rob Banks when he already has super speed. Instead of just coming here and robbing Banks with super speed, he decided to make his presence known to both the Star Labs gang and the Supergirl gang and use laser vision instead. <laughs> Dads, there's no reason to be concerned. Dads? You got, you got a problem, problem with that? that? No. I love musicals. So. I'm sorry, did Barry just make a gay joke? Come on. Stop! Barry! Oh my god. Oh, what? Running into the middle of gunfire can get you shot? Who would have fucking guessed? Not these two, because apparently they have a block of cement in between their ears. No, I'm sorry, what's going on? Why did you do this to us? I did it because I believe in the good guys. It was to teach all of you a lesson. So the lesson was? Love. Love is about letting yourself be saved. <laughs> One little detail though I should mention. If you die in here, you die out there. Do you have fucking brain damage? What if they were shot multiple times, Quicksilver style? What if they were shot in the head? You can't teach them this lesson if they're fucking dead, you piece of shit. Not to mention, he still robbed this bank. He damaged the front door to break in. So he committed a crime and damaged property just to make a stupid point. All I wanna do Come running home to you. There's nowhere to run. Looks like we got a robbery in progress over at Court Industries. Don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk. I don't think that's yours, pal. Cuff him, 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 cuff him. Did you even bring the power dampening cuffs, you idiot? Why am I not surprised? Looks like David Copperfield's not too far from us. He's at one of Mercury Lab satellite offices. Don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk, don't stop to talk. Man, you just can't help yourself, can you? Do yourself a favor, give it up. 
There's nowhere for you to go. Wally, are you trying to be the new there's nowhere to run? Because you're gonna have to put a lot more passion into it if you want to top this. There's nowhere to run! I think I just did. Oh, phew, it was just a hologram. I'm not undoing the shot though, because these twats actually thought he was here and they stopped to talk. If you make a move, you'll regret it. Now, I can get what I came for. Everybody okay? <laughs> Take one step before you tell me, I will blow you away. No one learns from each other's goddamn mistakes. Oh, Wally got fucked because he didn't tell anyone he was going to throw the stone into the speed force? Man, that was devastating. Let me release this guy from prison and not tell anyone about it. I will face this metahuman magician by myself with a gun even though he can fucking teleport and he literally did this earlier. Yeah, I'm sure this will work this time. No! What the hell are you doing? He was about to tell me who Savitar is. Cisco, Caitlin, and Joe all have panic alarms to summon Barry, who isn't doing anything important at the moment, and Wally, not to mention, and none of them thought of using them as this guy was wandering Star Labs. Joe, he's headed for the elevator! Cisco, why the fuck are you telling Joe to go after him when you just saw him fail? Push the panic button and have a speedster cuff him again. We had a deal. I've altered the terms of our agreement. Whoa! <laughs> Joe is absolutely in the wrong, and these dipshits became fucking stupid for the plot. But of course, the show is going to glance over that like that's not the case. So I don't give a damn. It's because of you he's on the loose. You let him out. That is on you. This is my friend. It's the man's daughter. Fuck off, be pissed at Joe for not having Barry, Wally, and yourself in the same room as him in case anything went haywire. There's nowhere to run! Star Labs. Don't stop to talk, 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 don't stop to talk. Stop! Mother Caitlin, you can fight this. Shut up and put the damn power dampening cuffs on her. Anything? I searched the whole building, she's gone. Gone? Fucking gone? She had four fucking seconds to run away. They're on the second floor. She has to take the fucking elevator to get out. What the fuck do you mean she's nowhere in the entire building? Caitlin. It's me. Are you telling me Barry never successfully put the power dampening cuffs on her in seven years? Why do I even ask? He probably forgot they existed every single time he faced her. Yeah, I don't know. We told you to stay away, Flash. Yeah, well, I try not to listen to criminals or stupid people. Oh! It's two versus one. Odds aren't in your favor.
manager. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I looked at Dylan and I lost my balance. She's a metahuman who induces vertigo. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting confirmation that Barry was there when Top's power was clearly explained. Mm-hmm. He knew she induces vertigo when looking at her, he knew she caused Jesse to fumble which resulted in her and Scudder's escape, and yet the dumbass decides to stare at her for 27 seconds. But there's an extremely good reason for this happening. They needed Emo Berry to come out of his hole and save the day. God. Relocate them, you moron. Get her out of here. Go. <sighs> Take her out. 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 She got away. I told you exactly where she'd be. You and I can both be gods. All you have to do is kill the girl. What the? Just kill her yourself, dipshit. For context, this woman is the one who figures out how to imprison Savitar in the Speed Force four years from now. She is a major threat to him. So why the hell is he sending his non-speedster lackey to kill her? What's wrong? We should go. But <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, just keep gasping as it slowly moves towards you instead of ducking like human instinct would have you do. Jesus, Southpaw, how many of these moments are we gonna get? Where is she? Right here. What the- then how did she freeze HR's coffee? If she can freeze liquids from 50 feet away with no concern for barriers, then why doesn't she just freeze the water inside Tracy and instantly kill her that way? And let me guess, nobody, not Barry, not Joe, not Cisco, and not Julian thought to bring the power dampening cuffs. Fucking fantastic, let's once again just forget about all our conflict ending resources and abilities to stretch out this stupid dumbass plot. So what? Uh your Savitar's lackey now? I'm gonna get her to head back this way. When she does, you gotta knock her out, okay? Now, Cisco! How many times does it have to be said, he can run at Mach 3? There's no fucking way this is moving as fast as he is. Bullets don't even travel that fast, and Caitlyn is not a speedster, goddammit. It was the left leg last time, right? What? Fucking move! Remember, Barry can still use super speed even when hit by a frost blast, so this is absolute bullshit. Okay, Kate, God! Oh, Cisco did absolutely nothing. He just let her walk over to Barry, stab him, and get away. Good, great, awesome, splendid. I know he choked up at first, but now Caitlyn has stabbed Barry. What the hell is it gonna take for him to do something? Barry's death? The entire gang's death? No one's asking him to kill her, just knock her out. This was literally the fucking plan. Cecile. Joe, I'm okay. She didn't hurt me. That's because killing you does nothing for me. Hand her over. You don't have to do this. Ha ha ha! 
What the hell is this? Why aren't you doing anything, you crusty fucking sock? He just watched her shoot Joe's gun. How did he know she was aiming for his gun and not his body like she does seconds later? <laughs> Take a goddamn hint, will you? You already tried this shit with Cisco and screwed yourself over. Did you forget you're faster than projectiles and can relocate people? I lived, but a funny thing happened when I did. You, Joe, Wally, Cisco, you all shunned me because I wasn't the true Barry Allen. I was an aberration, a disposable hero. Oh my god, you can't be serious. The entire Star Labs gang has been character assassinated with this origin. Eight fucking characters just rejected a clone of Barry and treated him as disposable. They would never do this. Did you guys fucking forget they even cared about the time remnant at the end of season two? What's the time remnant doing? He's creating his own pulse. Wait, his body can't handle that. Then what's gonna happen? He'll die. Okay, so the, the time remnant, it's still you. But he died. He was willing to sacrifice himself for all of us. That's how much he loved us. So this memory loss fiasco is a literal gateway to getting rid of Savitar. If you need a memory refresher, here's the gist. Since Savitar is a duplicate of Barry from the future, Barry shares all memories and experiences with him. Meaning if Barry loses his memory, then Savitar loses his memory. Meaning Wally loses his speed, but also meaning Savitar won't go through with killing Iris, since he doesn't know he needs to do that. And then the paradox will catch up to him and erase him from existence when the time comes. So like nobody has to do anything anymore. All they have to do is keep Barry memoryless for like two days until the paradox kills Savitar. But of course, we then get the most contrived and nonsensical bullshit that leads to the team forcing Barry to recover his memories before the two days are up. And here we go. Shortly after Barry loses all his memories, he is called to a probable cause hearing to immediately testify against Heatmonger. And for some fucking reason, if he can't testify, then Heatmonger is set free. This pyromaniac with a reputation for committing arson, who even has a supervillain name, will just be allowed to go if Barry can't testify. There should be damning evidence that this guy is guilty if he has a reputation like this. Why the fuck does his freedom rest on Barry's shoulders and why does it have to happen right now? So that's super contrivance number one. To solve this problem, Cisco pulls out Edith and tells Barry to wear them and read what he sees on screen. But he shouldn't get them wet. Understandable, you wouldn't want to dunk these high-tech glasses in water, otherwise it might seep in through potential cracks in the hinges. Testifying goes pretty well, until it happens to be so hot in the courtroom that Barry starts sweating. A single drop of sweat falls off his head onto the arm of the glasses, sparking it. <sighs> Are the fucking circuits just openly exposed on this thing? And now Barry can no longer proceed, so Heatmonger is freed. So that's super contrivance number two. That very night, Heatmonger decides to celebrate his innocence by going into a building with his face exposed and burning it down? <laughs> I can't. Seconds later, it's even reported on the news that eyewitnesses identified Heatmonger as the perp. How did the probable cause hearing entirely rely on Barry's testimony if Heatmonger is so fucking stupid that he basically shouts he's guilty from the rooftops whenever he commits arson? Wear a mask, you fucking clown. You're going right back to jail. The sheer incompetence is hilarious, but it is so painfully obvious this only happened to force Barry to retrieve his memories, so he knows how to use his super 
speed and effectively put out the fire. So that's super contrivance number three. And now Savitar has his memories back, so the gang is back to square one. What an embarrassment of an episode. That is one big pile of shit. Alternatively, a viewer informed me of a potential way they could have kept Barry's memory loss but also take care of Heatmonger. You guys remember this tech? He's slowing down. The speed force is leaving his body. Extract Barry's speed and give it to Wally. Have Wally deal with Heatmonger. Keep it that way until the paradox kills Savitar. That's it. But I guess they kinda forgot they have that technology. Kinda forgot. Now, someone is probably gonna tell me I'm wrong, because they needed two speedsters to successfully put out the fire. And yeah, maybe the building will burn down in this hypothetical. But the least Wally could do is relocate all the victims outside. That way, nobody dies, including Iris. You got your memories back. Now we can all focus our attention on stopping Sabotar. Good luck with that. Please tell me we're not going to just let her walk out of here. Great idea, Joe. Maybe handcuff her? To disable the killer frost side of her? No? Anyone? Just my idea? Okay. Piece of the Dominator's technology. That's great. You can't have it, Barry. What? This tech is the only thing that we can use. Barry, this is the kind of tech that wars are fought over. I'm sorry, Barry. You'll have to find another way. If Lila won't let us have the Dominator's tech, then we're gonna break into Argus and we're gonna steal it. Wally and I will phase through the walls. We'll be in and out of there before anyone even gets off a shot. Uh, hello? No, you won't. Yeah, we... What is that? That? It's a metahuman power dampener, and it's all over the building, so you can't use your powers inside. Uh, uh, uh hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again? That is a metahuman power dampener, and it's all over the building, so you can't use your powers inside. Okay, okay, what is it? That is a metahuman power dampener. A and where is it? And it's all over the building. So what can't you do? So you can't use your powers inside. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, Savitar is a metahuman, and this massive special ops government building renders metahumans powerless. Uh, okay. Okay, hmm. Oh, here is an idea. How about you relocate Iris to this building and ask Lila to have her hang out somewhere secure, like in a prison cell, just until a bit after midnight. I highly doubt she'd be against that if Barry explained what they're up against. After all, she does later give him an extremely powerful item that wars are fought over, apparently. Savitar won't have super speed in the building, and Iris will be unfindable and untouchable. But nah, we need to break in to steal a thing that will let us shoot a gun that we're not even sure will hit Savitar because he's faster than everything. Strategic fucking geniuses. I cannot believe Cisco indirectly provided the easiest solution out loud and no one fucking realized. What if we just put you, put Iris on a plane to no. Paris or somewhere far away? There's nowhere on earth that Savitar wouldn't find her. Whoa, 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 wait. Shut the fuck up for a moment. HR is on to something. If you put Iris on a really long flight that takes place during the moment Savitar is supposed to kill her, then he's fucked. How is he supposed to reach her while she's hundreds of miles in the air? If the only way Savitar knows what their plan is is from Barry knowing, then why hasn't anyone conjured up a secret plan behind his back? Like have everything play out the same, but instead of Iris going to Earth 2, she secretly takes a long flight a couple hours before it's time for Savitar to kill her. Not only would Savitar not know where she is, but even if he does end up knowing by threatening the gang or HR being a fucking dumbass and spilling the beans, he would have no way of getting to her. Barry can go fuck himself for immediately shutting down HR's idea. It's clear the writers want a big, dramatic, subversive ending. Snart's gonna help me break into Argus. 
get the power source. I thought he was with the legends. No, he dead. Well, I... You time traveled again. Yeah. That's what got us in this mess in the first place. Look, I'm not changing time. I will put him back right where I found him after we get what we need. Um, does he not remember that putting everything back to the way it was to overwrite Flashpoint still had consequences in the present? Does he not remember Savitar telling him this like an episode or two ago? Cause and effect's a tricky thing. See, that's the thing about time travel, Barry. The more you do it, Unless the rules apply to you. He just time traveled some more. He knows that time travel itself is enough to create unpredictable changes in the present, even if he changes nothing in the past. He knows Joe is aware there were consequences for undoing Flashpoint, and yet he thinks this will reassure Joe. And it does. Fine, you say we need Snart's help? We need his help. Okay. And nothing's changed in the present when he does put Snart back. Lucky. Where's Iris? Safely stashed away on Earth 2 with old Harry Wells. Barry, Savitar knows where Iris is. Savitar's coming. Harry, Wally. Oh my god. The killer is on his way and the speedster just stands there. Fuck. Off. Yeah, I know, but Barry said there's nowhere on Earth Savitar wouldn't find her. But the least Wally could do is try. Just try. Who knows, there could be a 1% chance Wally can hide her somewhere Savitar doesn't look in. So just try. Is that too much to ask for? <gasps> yeah. <sighs> yeah. My suspension of disbelief has once again been broken with the way the transmogrification device is used in this scene. While it's a super convenient plot device that raises questions about its existence on Earth-19, I do accept how it's used in Episode 6 when it's introduced. Watch this. Oh, um, let me just... Did you just neuralize us? No, I gave you a simple retinal adjustment so all of you can see me, HR, while the rest of the world sees Randolph Morgan. See? It's like hologram type tech that only changes HR's head to another person's head with a similar shape and appearance. Just his head. I can buy that. What is far beyond convenient is when it suddenly changes a person's entire body, clothes, and fucking voice. Iris has long hair and clothes that take up more space than what HR is wearing. Does it create matter in that extra space they're taking up? Because if it's truly just light, if it's truly just a hologram, and Savitar or Killer Frost grab her in those areas, and they do, then they'll phase right through her clothes or hair, and vice versa. The device hides HR's hat, which takes up space above fake Iris's head. Did it destroy that matter? What happens if they grab Iris by the head? Will they bump into the invisible hat? If this thing isn't creating and destroying matter out of its ass, then the ruse is busted if any of these very possible actions happen. Anyway, let's go back and see how HR managed to pull this off. Hi. Let's get you out of here. Get her. We can't outrun them. No shit. No, we can't. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The only reason Iris survived is because Savitar is a fucking moron and didn't get Iris himself with super speed. Shouldn't really surprise me though, since he's a clone of Barry Allen. Barry Celeste Allen. You changed back. Does that mean what I think it means? Yeah, Joe. Future's ours again. Uh, Savitar is still out there, and he finds out Iris is still alive like three minutes later. Are you telling me he can't go kill her three minutes later just because the newspaper changed? If he kills Iris right now, this literally cannot happen. The name will change back because Iris will be dead. Why are they so certain this is set in stone? Don't they know that he's been very hell-bent on making Barry suffer? If avoiding the paradox entirely relies on killing Iris, 
virus at a super specific time and won't work even if it's just three minutes later, then why the fuck does it take so long for the paradox to reach him? Shouldn't he be immediately erased as soon as he failed to perform the task that is responsible for his existence? Ah fuck, who am I kidding? They wanted to end episode 22 on a cliffhanger, and now they have to fill episode 23 with something, right? And preferably end it with one more final shitty CGI battle. But we won't give up on you, okay? That is not what we do. You all shunned me because I wasn't the true Barry Allen. So that was a fucking lie. Oh, Caitlyn is a speedster too, apparently. Excellent. Look out! You obey for what you did, and you can die the same way twice. Hmm, he could have just impaled Cisco as he was running by. But since this is a clone of Barry we're talking about, he's gotta stop to talk, you must understand. Hope he kills Cisco right after he's done talking, though. So you can kill her still. Gee, I wonder how that would affect the newspaper byline. It's written. Nothing's it's written. written. Except for this, right? Die to it! You kill me, you become me. Either way, I live. <laughs> How could you possibly know that? You were born from being a rejected time remnant, not because Barry killed one. Also, why would you tell Barry exactly what he needs to do to keep you alive? Cause now he- Yeah, exactly. Now he won't. You fucking idiot. Oh god, let's please wrap this up. What a garbage finale. <laughs> He was using super speed to charge at Barry, then he's suddenly running at normal speed and is shot by a bullet. This is a clone of Barry, did they forget he could react to these from behind him and at point blank? Fuck it, Barry's dead, HR should still be alive from the two solutions the show indirectly mentioned and then didn't acknowledge or just flat out ignored, Savitar was born from eight character assassinations, he's just as stupid as Barry and is the reason Iris lived and he died, Killer Frost is bad asking in more plot armor than Captain Cold could ever dream of. It's just a marvelous season, isn't it? And we just got season 8, which is off to a great start, and we could be seeing many more seasons of Flash in the future. It's gonna be Flash, it's gonna be a grand old time, just more Flash, we need more Flash, Flash forever. Well, that took longer than usual. I know I said I'd release this video in November, but I've successfully subverted your expectations, so quit your whining. You can place all blame on this delay on Disney, as I planned to release a video on Shang-Chi as soon as late October. Disney said they'd release it on Disney Plus 45 days after its theatrical debut, but then retconned their statement and released it on November 12, as part of their grand celebration of Disney Plus Day, because they absolutely needed a day to celebrate celebrate their platform born from greed. Since I had to wait a whole nother month to edit the video, I decided to finally commit to finishing season 3 and making this. So here we are. Off I go to finish the Shang-Chi video, and then I sleep. Thank you lots to my patrons for keeping me afloat. And shout out to Sohu, Ryan Fortner, Dominic the Donkey, and Galactic Archive for being the wealthiest men alive.